where does Averolimus fit now? I mean, you know, we have CDK4, we got fulvestrin alone. I mean, who, where are you giving Averolimus, and do we have any data that's come out recently at San Antonio, like the precog study, for example, you know, of Averolimus, of fulvestrin uh, with Averolimus? Uh, do, and we have another trial of Averolimus and uh, XMS stain. I mean, uh, Tijid, what do you do now? I mean, what do you think of that trial, that phase two trial, the pre -call? Yeah, so I think that, that was an interesting trial um, which looked at fulvestrant plus minus Everolimus um, for second line and beyond. So patients who had progressed in an aromatase inhibitor were randomized to receive fulvestrant as a single agent versus fulvestrant plus the mTOR inhibitor. So in terms of design, very similar to the Bolero 2 design, which looked at XMS stain plus minus Everolimus, but instead of XMS stain, it was fulvestrant um, in, in this trial. And as one would potentially predict, the full Western plus Everolimus arm did better than the full Western arm. Um, so I think it provides us an additional option of potentially combining an mTOR inhibitor with full Western as opposed to um, XMS stain. Um, and I think this might have value because if the first line at this time, we all agree, is letrozole plus palbo, and if you have a patient who progresses on letrozole palbo, it's unclear what to do at this time. You could use XMS stain plus Everolimus in that setting, but this trial would potentially allow you to switch both the partners, switch the AI to full Western, plus switch the CDK4-6 inhibitor to mTOR. But we just don't have enough data at this time uh, because this trial did not look at uh, patients who had received prior CDK4-6, but I think in practice, it's potentially uh, a combination that we would consider. A second point to consider would be this subtype of ER-positive breast cancer, which harbor ESR1 mutations. Right. So we do know that patients who received prior AIs tend to develop a mutation in the estrogen receptor, which causes the tumor to become estrogen independent. So if one of the mechanisms by which patients progress on letrozole, palbo, or other AIs is through ESR1 mutation, I would be more excited to use a CERD like fulvestrant um, in the second line setting as opposed to just continuing the AI. And just note that having an ESR mutation does not interfere with the eff efficacy of a CDK4 inhibitor. We have data from ASCO, you know, from SOFIA, uh, as well as from Paloma 3, that if an ESR mutation doesn't affect your response.